Question 46 with your hosts, John Preston and Jeff Covington. Sundays, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Welcome back to the show. It's Wednesday, June 29th, 2011. That's right. I love this song. It gets me fired up. <laughs> I'd really like to go down to Capitol Hill and just start slapping people in the face, honestly. Of course, they're, they're all a bunch of sallies. They would, you know, call the Capitol Police. No. <laughs> I really think they'd, our founding They'd be father, better off if you did it. I really they, think they our founding... They need a good SWAT. I think our founding fathers, Susan, really are uh, rolling over in their graves. Uh, you know, honestly. I mean, if they were alive today, they would not... Be tol- they would they would not tolerate half the crap that's going on in the quote unquote name of protection and justice and everything else. It's just ridiculous. TSA oh, can't oh, protect I, you. I agree with you. I agree with you entirely. TSA and the police can't protect you. You have to be able to protect yourself, and that's what the founding fathers understood. And you know, like they say, a well armed society is a very polite society. Nobody's <laughs> mouthing off to each other because everybody's got a gun. Nobody wants to beat <laughs> off the other guy with a gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I got to tell you that uh, here in here in in uh, I live in in Washington in La La Land, and it is uh, I, I live in Maryland actually. I'm I'm right in the suburbs and uh, gun free zone. We got lots of guns, and and it's just not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> there there is a. a for some reason, I, I shouldn't say for some reason. They they allow the criminals out, you know, of the jails early. They 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 parole certain guys, you know, people that they let out. They they certain people are let out knowingly because they know they're going to create more havoc, and therefore it calls for, you know, it, there's a justification for more police and a bigger police state and more laws and everything else. I mean, that's that's how the system works. Some people don't think that that's how the system works, but you know. It's corrupt like that. The it's- system is broken. The system is seriously broken. And this Lockerbie case really shows how it happens. Because it, it, it resulted, in, it resulted in, in the case of Lockerbie, it resulted in a huge breakdown of uh, moral and police authority where you had the CIA uh, uh, providing cover for heroin shipments from Lebanon through Frankfurt Airport and on into New York City, and on to Los Angeles. The CIA um, shipping drugs, Susan? Oh, my God, I'm so shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. It just shocked. And what happened was, on Lockerbie, on the, on the bombing of Pan Am 103, the defense intel, the, 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 the hostages were held for so long, and there were so many times that they... That they, they the, CIA got close and the Defense Intelligence Agency got close, and they knew what was happening. They figured it out that there was a rogue agent who was a double agent who was feeding intelligence to the hostage keepers, and that they were telling them when they needed to move these guys. But the, the conditions were, hell- were hellacious. This is, this, this, is, this is gross inhumanity. Um, and so the, the Defense Intelligence Agency had those, in, those eight officers had the integrity to call in uh, the, the guys from Washington. And they said, you guys need to come in from Washington and do a serious investigation of what the heck is going on here. And we think that you're going to – we're confident you're going to find that, that there's a rogue agent team that is subverting our efforts to rescue these hostages. And so – Sure enough, the Washington guys come in. They bring in some FBI. They bring in the the general, uh, some people from the CIA headquarters to do the investigation, um, and uh, all of them go come into to, to Lebanon. They do their investigation. They do prove the heroin trafficking. When they go out, they were flying on Pan Am 103. And what's interesting is that the State Department issued a. Uh, an internal travel advisory that was not put out to the public, but which was distributed through embassies. And it told everybody to get off that particular flight because Pan Am 103 was going down. 
So they told everybody, the State Department told everybody to get off that flight. And they did. Sure enough, they did. And, and which freed up seats at Christmas time for students from Syracuse University who were traveling standby to go home for the holidays to see their families. And a whole bunch of kids got on the flight, 18, 19, 20 years old, got on that flight having no idea, having no access, no political access. And then when the plane blew up, all those kids died. And that is the, the, the epitome of corruption of this system. It's disgusting. And we, we blame Libya and use that as a justification to bomb and kill more innocent people and blow them up well, into little pieces. Absolutely. And, and I, 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 for one, am outraged over it. And it's not only because it's, it, it's Libya. I mean, it's, it's not, the point is not that it's Libya. It could be anybody. You know, tagging somebody else as responsible for such a heinous crime so that the United States can escape its own responsibilities for what it did. That's just not going to be acceptable. I, don't, I wouldn't care if they blamed Zimbabwe or if they blamed Portugal or if they blamed, it, you know, it easily be Sierra the Leone. It doesn't matter. It they the didn't Chinese, do it. The same thing, Susan, to, and blaming us, you know, and then coming over here and saying, well, we have to have a no-fly zone and bomb the hell out of the United States because look what they do all over the, all over the world. <laughs> I mean, they, That's they, right. They, tables could turn on us. We're so arrogant. A lot of these, the people that don't want to get, inv get involved in politics, well, that will never happen here. Uh, really? You need to pull your head from your rear end and look around you because the Chinese already own almost everything. You know, if they decided to yeah. come over and bomb us, we wouldn't be able to defend ourselves because we're everywhere else. Yeah, that's right. That's but we defend right. Us. We have really, not, I mean, we have some forces here at, at home, but real, realistically, it wouldn't be enough to, to do, we, we're, we're spread too thin. We're like the Roman Empire right now. You know, our, our national security is actually worse. And instead, we have the CIA, instead of the CIA actually doing what their mandate says, we have them doing the exact opposite, helping build a new world order, killing off their own. You know, I say this all the time, they eat their own. When they get in their way, they eat their own. They don't care. Yes. <laughs> look what they true. did to you. Look what they did. Yeah, look what they did to me. Look what they did to me. So people don't. Un so people understand. Susan's second cousin was, is Andy Card, the former Bush's former chief of staff. Talk about eating their own. They don't care if you get in their way. If you pose a threat in any way, shape, or form, you're done. And I, Susan, luckily they didn't view you as too much of a threat that they, they didn't get a chance to uh, take you. Well, out. listen, Nate, listen, guys, uh, I, I, do, I do take issue with that because what they tried to do to me was forcibly drug me with a, it, to, to the point that I would be chemically lobotomized. OK, they, they actually I know I fought it. I refused to do it. I wasn't going along with the game. I was not going to. I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to do that for you. I draw the line on, on, on chemical lobotomies for the sake of politicians. But they actually advocated uh, forcibly drugging me with Haldol, Prozac and Ativan. All three of those things. And and I would have been a zombie. Oh, you would have been a complete Oh, zombie. my God. And for no reason. They admitted, they said, well, yeah, she doesn't hallucinate. She doesn't have his... Oh, there was a reason. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah, oh, yeah, there was a reason, all right. But check this out. The whole time, I was arrested on the charge that I had gone and told my cousin and Secretary of State Colin Powell that there would be no weapons of mass destruction inside Iraq, and that Iran would rise as, as a regional power in the Middle East. And, I mean, I told them, like, I, I, issue, I gave them a letter that had a whole bunch of, of, of out, that outlined the consequences of the war. I said the war would cost $1.6 trillion. Iran would rise as a superpower. There would be no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. The war would become a magnet for terrorists, and charismatic leaders would rise up and replace Osama bin Laden. And I said um, that democracy would throw power away from the moderate Islamic people to the fundamentalists. I was right on all counts. I was going to say, wow, are you reading off a checklist, Susan? Because it's like yes. check, 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 and check. Check. 
check, 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 and check. And yeah, that's right. And get this, I was arrested on the charge that I did tell Congress and the White House this. Then, once they had me under indictment, they came back to the people, and I couldn't speak anymore because they weren't going to give me a trial. I, they came back to the people and said, oh, it's those darn, the war is, is we should blame the intelligence community for this war. It's if only the intelligence community had told us, we would have stopped it. But they didn't tell us. Meanwhile, it's they their fault. They fail for, for telling them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now exactly. mention the Susan people. We had no idea. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're going to break. Stick around, guys. We'll be back in a few minutes. we got to pay the bills. You're listening to us on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Friends with the enemy, a presidential terrorist. Ain't that a contradiction? I guess it goes to show the truth. It's stranger to fiction. But they don't even show the truth when soldiers are missing. I'm only trying to show the truth.